Having the task to inspire you to create artful and cinematic shots with a small team and a moody slide setup, I want to share the full production process of my latest art project. In this video, I will demonstrate how to achieve a contrast image using both natural and artificial light. And I will also guide you through crafting a captivating night light setup with LED tubes and a single light source. This video will be a valuable resource for your practice in lighting and camera work. During shooting, I had only seven hours at my disposal, a limited production budget and a few light sources. It were non-light fours of 500 watts Mark II and 300 watts B-Color and a few power tubes. On top of that, I had the opportunity to rent a red camera camera paired with Atlas Orion anamorphic lenses. To achieve dynamic moment, I opted for the versatile Dane and Dollar slider. A critical objective of this project was to experiment and showcase the potential of a limited light setup in both night and day interior settings. I will reveal these techniques and share them with you. My philosophy of working with set design revolves around this current texture and authentic locations that perfectly complement the story. These places can evoke various emotions, from the eerie and captivating to the charming and intriguing, depending on the mood we wish to convey and our artistic preferences. For this particular project, I stumbled upon a hidden gem of location that looks stunning as this, requiring minimal efforts for a visually captivating shot. The abundance of beautiful windows, paintings, plants, furniture, mirrors, and practical lamps provided the perfect elements for storytelling. Not to mention the spacious settings allowed us to play with different focal length, utilizing both the 40mm and 65mm lenses to our advantage. During our scouting phase, I meticulously captured several pictures, noting every interesting detail and angle for our shots. This preparation helped me devise a well thought out shooting plan, ensuring that I could position the camera precisely where I envisioned before the actual shooting day began. By carefully curating our set design and having a clear vision in mind, we were able to work fast. Also, for constant inspiration, I never stop looking for reference shots. I have a couple of go-to resources that I find invaluable. The first one is FilmGrab, which offers a treasure trove of captivating ideas for set lighting and composition, sourced directly from movies. However, it's worth noting that this platform mainly features films and you won't find much from TV shows, music videos, or commercials. For those specific tasks, I turn to FrameSet. This resource has been a game changer for me, as it allows me to explore a vast array of stills with the exact contrast ratio I desire. And Color Palette Search option is an amazing tool for my set and color design work. Additionally, the resource provides me with the ability to view the original videos from the stills I like. Before filming, I carefully selected camera angles on the location. I chose one of the featured a key light source, the window. I like the idea that we could show the window as a primary light source and use this visual information to create additional side lighting by suggesting to the viewers that there might be another window on their right side. We could enhance the scene's depth. To achieve a more volumetric look, this native light wasn't enough. So I decided to intensify it and create a larger contrast ratio with deep shadows and bright lights. This allowed for a rich variety of light gradient tones, ranging from black to the white point of the light. To intensify the window light, I used a light force of 500 watts as a direct light source. However, since I didn't want to imitate harsh sunlight, I match the exposure of the window light with the additional light for the characters using 500 watts backlight with soft diffusion. 
For the characters in this scene, I opted for the side light with a double effusion, considering the limited space available for the close-up shot. Using direct light with diffusion or bouncing reflection would have made the light appear harsh. Instead, I employed both together, bouncing and reflection, with dance from diffusion using Lee 260. which result in a soft and beautiful light, providing a pure gradient of light and shadows. In the next scene, two characters engage in a nice conversation with each other. I divided this scene into three shots, one long master shot and two close-up shots for both characters. I chose this beautiful window as a backdrop for their dialogue. When positioning the characters in the scene, I made sure that the shadow side of the main character was not blending into the dark background. To achieve this, I used a careful backlight to separate the character from the background. However, I made sure the backlight wasn't too harsh or bright since we already had the key light source, the sky in the frame. Adding an unmotivated backlight with a more powerful light than the sky will look odd. With the bright and expensive sky serving as a backdrop, I decided to create a silhouette effect for the girl character. However, I also added a small gradient of light on the floor and legs to introduce some additional lighting and create a contrast gradient. Playing with the contrast of light in dark areas adds depth to the scene. By the way, if you're interested in learning more about simple cinematic lighting schemes like this gradient and silhouette, feel free to check out my free cinematography guide. It's absolutely free and you can start using my secret lighting techniques in your projects right now. The link to the guide is available below the video. For this close-up shot, we employed an extra negative fill by setting up a T-bone stand with black fabric in the frame. This simple technique helps enhance the volume when we have plenty of lights by adding shadows for contrast. The backlight from the Nonlight 300B is still in use, allied with reduced power for this shot. As for her close up shot, we also used the same negative feeling technique and achieved a captivating glow in your eyes using foam board. By placing a big white reflective object near her eyes, we created a beautiful glow effect. The Nanolite 500 watts light positioned behind the girl is directed towards the outside of the window and its reflection from the foam board adds to the glow in her eyes. Here I'm discussing with the first AC and second AC about which props will look better in the background. Eventually we decided to place a plant. The new Hall and Solidcom C1 radio system is truly amazing. It eliminates the need for a server box, which was present in a previous version. Now all we have are a few lightweight microphones, and among them there is a master transmitter that serves as the base and stays with me. The lighting scheme here remains consistent with a backlight, but I introduced an additional side light to eliminate the character's face and capture emotions. We use a solar board outside the window to reflect the light from a non-light 500 watts. I prefer bouncing light because it results in a softer and more diffused illumination, offering a wider range of lighting possibilities. When planning camera moments, I try not to overdo them and strive to alternate between static and moving scenes one to one. This approach makes the editing process smoother, as having several dynamic shots in the range can complicate clean transitions between movements in this scene. As for the light setup, we use the same scheme as in the first shot. However, to be honest, I'm not entirely satisfied with the result. 
I would adjust the side light by moving it more to the side and reducing its intensity to make additional shadows area on the girl from the camera's perspective. To establish seamless communication between the actor, the crew and myself while filming this scene in the yard, we relied on the HoloLand radio communication system. For the lighting setup, we utilized an LED non-light tube along with a reflection from a solar surface. In backstage videos, I may appear completely comfortable and knowledgeable about what I do, but that wasn't the case in this particular scene. Originally, I had planned to film it with natural daylight, but unfortunately, I ran into delays while filming a few previous scenes, and by the time I got to this one, the daylight had disappeared. In a moment of quick thinking, I realized that we had a balcony adjacent to the window and the location. So, using a junior boom arranger, we set up a Forza 500 watts on the balcony to imitate the effect of daylight and provide the backlight for the scene. While I attempted a few other setups, the backlight turned out to be the best option. Additionally, I love the look of practical lamps in the frame. To utilize this visual element, I had to control the exposure of the light coming from these lamps. I use a simple paper wrap to dim some of the other bright areas from the practical lights. To enhance the scene's depth and contrast, I employed an LED tube as an additional backlight for the girl. I set it at daylight temperature to create the illusion of light coming from another room. Furthermore, we turn on the non-light 300B to add a daylight feel to the background. This was crucial, as without it, the faraway room appeared too dark. We wanted to avoid a dark look and instead convincingly portrayed to our viewers that it is a natural day. As the shoot went on, our time became more limited, leaving us with the less time to set up each shot. To keep things moving, I aim to simplify the light schemes for the next scenes. For instance, in this particular scene, I had already planned a composition with mirror beforehand, so setting up the camera angle was quick and straightforward. In this angle, my focus was on eliminating the goal while also highlighting the character in the background. We achieved the soft overhead light by having an LED tube over her face. Additionally, we made use of all possible practical side lights. To add warmth and street light effects to the window, we introduced an additional warm light using the Nonlight 300B. Since I lost daylight, I had to shoot in this scene at night. The main challenge was to create the illusion of daytime, with the windows serving as the primary light sources. To achieve the desired effect, I came up with a rather uncommercial solution that surprisingly worked. I placed an LED tube on the window sill to increase the exposure of the tool, making the window appear bright as if it were daytime outside. For the rest of the light setup, we used a book light scheme with subdiffusion to create a side light effect. Additionally, I added a backlight to separate the character from the background. This backlight served as a motivation, simulating light from the bright window behind the girl. The window light on the right side was also exposed, thanks for the second light source, Nanlight 300B, 
to ensure consistency all light sources were adjusted to have the same 5600 Kelvin color temperature and power level. For the night scene, we made adjustments to the temperature of all lights to give them a warm tone. Similar to the light from outside the street lights. To achieve this effect, we changed the color temperature of the lights. Additionally, I decided to switch the side light to the NLED tube, as it provides a softer illumination compared to the powerful non light 300B. The darkness of the night is not merely black, it carries a specific tone. In the movies, this tone typically falls when an occult temperature range of 6000 to 10,000 Kelvin. When working in dark space to depict nighttime scenes, I make an effort to incorporate this night tone in the shadows. Even when a primary light source, like warm light in hallway, is present. To achieve this, I prefer to diffuse the night light tone throughout the entire shadows area by bouncing it from the white ceiling. Alright, that concludes the full breakdown of our art project. Feel free to implement these light techniques in your work to enhance your visual. Cheers and see you next time!